Hi, my name is Philip F. Napoli. I'm the, an associate professor and chair of the Department of History at Brooklyn College. COVID is the biggest challenge the new secretary will face. The VA, like the rest of the country, is facing a crisis. VA patients are dying of COVID in alarming numbers. On January 20th, the department announced that there have been over 8,000 COVID deaths among VA hospital patients in total since the start of the pandemic, with more than 1,000 of those deaths reported in the last two weeks alone. In January 2021, the VA has reported a total of 1,481 COVID deaths. A large number of VA patients in the hospital have COVID now. Between January 12 and 18, the department reported 1,500 COVID inpatients, slightly down from the week prior, but still up 113% over the numbers in November. A second challenge for the new secretary is addressing the needs of women veterans. Women are the fastest growing demographic in the military and as a result in the veterans category with the number of women using VA healthcare services almost tripling since the year 2000, from about 160,000 to 475,000, according to VA data. The country has approximately 2 million women veterans out of 18 million total, and getting those additional 1.5 million women into the VA system is the issue. Women veterans are less likely to self-identify as veterans, which is a barrier to accessing benefits. For that reason, an active outreach program for those leaving the military service is crucial, but insufficient. Women in previous eras must also be made aware, aware of their eligibility through outreach and education. Why is this important? Because women who receive their health care through the VA have a lower risk of suicide and other health concerns than women who don't. So how do we do it? Well, the Samson Act, which was passed in December and signed into law by outgoing President Trump earlier this month, was a major step in the right direction. It features a, several key measures, including a system-wide comprehensive policy to end gender-based harassment and assault at VA facilities, including training for employees. Each staff uh, at a healthcare facility with a, must have a dedicated women's primary health care provider. The act creates a dedicated office of women's health within the VA and provides legal services to women veterans. The secretary will have to see to it that the Requirements of the act are quickly put into place throughout the VA system. Additionally, addressing the crisis of veteran suicide remains a massive issue and a priority for the VA. About 6,100 veterans died by suicide in 2017, the last year for which data is available. That number has remained steady throughout the previous decade, even as the total number of veterans in America has dropped by about 15%. Male veterans are 1.5 times more likely to die by suicide than Americans who never served in the military. And female veterans are 2.2 times more likely. The VA will have to address this head on. The final issue I'd like to highlight has to do with the military exposure to toxic substances and the long-term consequences for veteran health. President Biden has been focused on the issue that has plagued Gulf War and post-war uh, post 9-11 war veteran, which is toxic exposures. Biden's son, Bo, was a post 9-11 veteran and a member of the Delaware Army National Guard who served in Iraq in 2008. Bo Biden died of brain cancer in 2015, and his father suspects that exposure to toxic burn pits in Iraq could have been to blame. In a statement on Veterans Day, Biden said he wants to ensure that no veteran is locked out of treatment for conditions related to toxic exposures. So the secretary will have to expand on the work um, of the burn pit problem. For Vietnam veterans, VA care for Agent Orange related illnesses remains the top priority. These are some of the major issues facing incoming Secretary Dennis McDonough as he leads the country's second largest federal agency with 400,000 employees and an annual budget that recently surpassed $200 billion.